Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning worship at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. On this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, we're so glad that you have joined us this morning for our worship service, a service of spiritual communion. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them, and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ beside us, Christ with us. Amen. Early one Sunday morning, when I was about eight years old, I woke up 6 a.m. and went in and got my cereal and flipped on the TV. And this was back in 1974 or 75, and we had four, maybe five channels of television. There were no cartoons on Sunday morning, by the way, kids. Um, so I flipped around, and wouldn't you know, I found uh, a faith healer televangelist, one with a really bad hairpiece, I remember, and he was having a healing service, and during that healing service, this little boy about my age came up, and he couldn't hear, and he he couldn't speak because he couldn't hear, and so the man laid his hands on the little boy's ears and screamed in his face a couple of things and did his hands like this, and the boy still couldn't hear. It was obvious. He was testing. The boy still couldn't hear. It was really awful. It upset me because I'd been taught that you know, God loved us and took care of us and even told that God healed people sometimes and yet God didn't heal this little boy when the man with the bad hairpiece asked him to. So my parents stumbled out of bed at the noise of the televangelist and came in and I was full of questions. Mommy, Daddy, this, this man was on TV and he, he put his hands on this boy's head and he tried to heal him and he didn't and, and the boy couldn't hear and, and he still can't hear and the man said God would heal him and, and the man told the, the mom and the, to, to keep working with him but the boy still couldn't, couldn't hear him. I mean, is that, can people do that? Really, a lot of questions for grown-ups who haven't had their coffee yet at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And so, I don't remember exactly what my mom and dad said to me, but I knew that it was something like, um, son, God loves you, and God takes care of you, and we have doctors to help us with being healed. And yes, sometimes people will be cured when, when we pray for them, and sometimes not. And maybe the little boy got some other kinds of healing from God, and Son, I think you need to be healed of waking up at 6 a.m. Something like that. And as I grew older, and, and now even, I, I, I came to learn the story of Jesus. And the story that we see today in Mark is starts right off from the bat showing us that Jesus' ministry was all about healing. He drew the crowds in, as we see in Mark 1. And Jesus uh, gets right to it. He emerges from the wilderness. He calls people 
to follow Him and then He preaches and then He teaches and then He heals and then He heals some more. And then He heals someone's mama and then He has more people line up at His door wanting even more healing. Jesus healed and cured. And Jesus still heals and sometimes cures. Sometimes. And I say sometimes because... All of us have been through the excruciating experience of watching someone we love die from a degenerative illness. We pray ourselves hoarse, and the people we love still die. I prayed a lot for my parents, let me tell you. Over the last two years, I've lost two parents to degenerative illnesses. Both of them had an entire army of people praying for them, yet they continued to slip away and eventually they died. They were not cured of their ailment. And so that might lead us to ask, well, was God playing favorites? Is God playing favorites when God miraculously heals someone? Well, no. (laughs) And there's a lot of really terrible answers to that question that I've heard before. you know. Well, God had more plans for them, so they were healed. Well, that doesn't really work. God had lots of plans for the people that you were praying for who, who didn't live. God had lots of plans for my parents if they had lived. They were great-grandparents. They would have gone on being great-grandparents and being and lo- loving all of us. But yet, they, they died. And I've known plenty of people who have been miraculously saved for whom we have said God had plans for them and they just continued to live as notorious sinners, as we say, and were just notoriously awful people (laughs) in need of great repentance. Or, Or there's the one that the televangelist will say, this is an old saw, well, you just didn't have enough faith. Someone said that to a friend of mine who had a, a congenital blindness, and when he wasn't cured of his blindness, the, the traveling healer, so-called faith healer, told his mom, well, you need to have more faith. And that's, that's false, too, because it looks at prayer as, as, as some kind of economic thing, that if we pray enough, we're going to have enough in the prayer account, and then God's going to pay attention and do what we ask. And that also is patently false. I don't buy that one either. I think one of our main problems, and this is the problem that I have uh, sometimes even, is that when I'm praying for healing, I'm really praying for curing. We want healing to be the departure of the physical affliction. And that doesn't always happen. Our bodies have limits. We live in in a broken world full of all kinds of physical limitations to which our bodies are limited. And sometimes those limitations overtake us and we die. And we weren't cured. But it in no way means that God did not heal. Now we see a cure in Simon's mom, but we also see the end result of a healing. Because whatever Jesus did when this fever left her, as the text says. Her heart and her soul were healed. She instantly turned to doing the very same thing for Jesus and for the others that Jesus and God had done for her through serving them. In fact, Simon's mother, somebody's mom, was the first disciple of Jesus, if you think about it. She was the first deacon anyway, because the word deacon just means servant. So she's the first person in the Gospel of Mark to serve Jesus. She's the first deacon. So whatever happened in her cure, she was healed too, because she popped up out of bed and she got right to serving God. And you know, sometimes we are cured, and sometimes I've heard of of those of us who have been cured, but if we stop and think long enough, all of us have been healed. 
All of us have had things happen in our lives that have been deeply healing, that have led to our turning towards service and turning towards being able to love other people gratuitously as God loved us yet again. Some of them are, are ordinary things. Some of them are, are the kind of healing that has come when, when we found good, good medicine and good spiritual care. It's meant that conditions in our body have been arrested or slowed down such that we've been able to do some things and to, to, to complete some business, to close some loops, to reconcile some relationships that we might not have been able to otherwise reconcile. Sometimes healing has come to us miraculously in, in, in making a connection with the right person at the right time. Running into them at the Starbucks or, or, or getting a phone call from them at, ex at the exact right moment and being able uh, to have them lift your heart into a good place or have you be able to do that for them or, or to be able to heal something that was broken in that relationship. And if you think about these bodies that we walk around in, they are broken and they are flawed and they are unlimited, but they are also miraculously built, as the psalm says. Every single moment there is healing happening within our bodies that God made. Our immune systems responding and protecting us from all manner of disease and illness around us without our even knowing it. And how about the demons that we wrestle? All of us have to wrestle with demons named hatred and anger and depression. And those demons that tell us that we're worthless, the great lie that says that we are not enough, those demons that are, are easily chased away by the love of a friend or a family member or a part of our chosen church family who remind us in big or small ways that we are beloved children of God. Some of us have been cured. All of us have been healed through God's good work and are being healed through God's good work right now. And so let's remember not to confuse healing and curing because Jesus came to earth. God incarnate came to earth. And though He, he taught and He healed and He healed some more, He continues to heal to this day. And we can continue to respond to that healing by serving God, by being the same force of healing and good out into a world desperately in need of healing and good. You know, you wonder, as Mark says uh, later, you wonder what happened to all the people who Jesus healed of demons a little later in Mark. Because they were lined up at the door and you wonder how many of them were, were healed in the same way that Simon's mother were healed. How many of them, even if, if, if a third of them, a tenth, a quarter of them, were healed in the manner that Simon's mother was healed, they too were even then sent out into the world as transformed, gratuitously loving servants of God, just as we can be. God saw a broken world and God sent Jesus who entered into ministry by doing the most self-giving, gratuitously loving thing that God can do, healing. So let's acknowledge and let's, let's be grateful in a really conspicuous way of the healing that we have experienced and will experience, and are experiencing. And let's take that healing, and let's go out and help heal the world.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President Joseph and Vice President Kamala, for the leaders of the nations and for the, those in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, we pray today for Pat Allen, Louisa Anthony, Sylvia Britt, Ida Demons, Avery Duhart, Vivian Fitzhugh, Benito Ford, Kayla Hall, Robert Jackson, Cleopatra Johnson, Langston Johnson, Rosemarie Hutchinson Lockett, Carl Manson, Francis B. Martin, Christy Moffitt, Vincent Murray, Ken Singleton, Bunny Smith, Edna Stevens, Emory Stevens, James Ward, Jerry Ward, Mary Ware, Anne Washington, and Sarah Wood. For these and those in, our, in any need or trouble, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, for all the departed, we pray today for Ophelia Scottsboro, Melita Hubert, Sister Tyson, Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering, without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Beloved, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, dear friends in Christ. Welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church for Sunday morning worship. I'm Tim Black. I'm the interim rector here at St. Paul's. And we're delighted that you have joined with us online for Sunday morning worship. We are having a spiritual communion service this morning. And just right off, wanted to invite everyone to come and receive communion host, uh, just the, the bread, the wafer, from 11.30 to 1 o'clock today at St. Paul's. We've done this a couple of times, and a, a lot of y'all have, have been coming by, and you, you simply drive up in your car. And we have Eucharistic ministers there who will give you communion. And you are welcome to take communion home to, uh, to, to people in your family, too or bring them with you in the car if you're all in a pod together. What we've done is we have um, prayed over this bread and blessed this bread, as you'll see in the service, and, and it's set on the altar for three days. So it has uh, been, been sitting long enough to uh, clear any possible infection that it might have. And so come and join us for uh, spiritual communion this afternoon by driving by St. Paul's and receiving communion. We are still the church, folks, and we're still worshiping together and being the church. We are worshiping during the week on Tuesday and Thursday at noonday at 12 and at 6.30 online. We're also having a Wednesday night Bible study still. We are studying the book of Revelation uh, through next Wednesday, and then we take a break for a week for Ash Wednesday, and then we will be picking up with Five Questions for Lent, which is a study that Bishop Wright is doing and in inviting churches from the diocese to take part in. So be looking for information on that. Uh, we will be having uh, Ash Wednesday services. We'll be having a live service, uh, not live here, but online at 12 o'clock on Ash Wednesday. And then our service, our, our evening service will be online at 7 o'clock. One of the other things we're doing uh, for Ash Wednesday, since we can't be together for the imposition of ashes, is we will be distributing small containers, uh, little envelopes that we uh, put together of ashes for you. And so if any of you want to come by this Sunday when you get communion, we have these ashes. They've, they've already been blessed with, with the blessing that we do for Ash Wednesday. And... You can come by this Sunday from 11.30 to 1, and then next Sunday, the 14th, we'll also have people here uh, giving them out from 11.30 to 12.30, just over here at the church at the awning. So please come and receive those if you would like. And, and, and in all truth, if you can't come and pick up ashes for Ash Wednesday, you're welcome to use whatever source of ashes you have within your household. Um, and we will invite you on Ash Wednesday to, uh, to gather as a family and impose ashes upon one another. And if you are alone, you're welcome to impose ashes on your forehead. You'll see when and how to do this during the services on Ash Wednesday. And so um, 
just be encouraged that we are continuing with our prayers and, and with preparation for a Holy Lent on Ash Wednesday. We'll have the rest of the Lent and Easter schedule out this next week. We are doing a, a number of new things during Easter and during Lent this year that you'll be hearing about very soon. We'll be having a few in-person services that will be limited in-person services, outdoors, limited to 50 people requiring registrations and things. Um, but you'll be hearing about those very soon and invited to take part in those as you can. If you can't come and worship in person, all of those services are going to be live streamed just as they are right now. So thank you for being with us. It's St. Paul's. And now I would like to turn things over to our vestry for the announcements. Good morning, St. Paul's. My name is Michael Blakely, and I'd like to welcome you to here this morning. For those that are visiting for the first time, we'd like to say welcome, thank you for attending, and please come again. There are several announcements. Uh, St. Paul's Finance Committee will meet via Zoom on Thursday, February 11th at 7 p.m. St. Paul's Episcopal Churchmen will meet via Zoom on Saturday, February 13th at 10 a.m. And St. Paul's Vestry will meet via Zoom on Tuesday, February the 16th at 6.30. St. Paul's Intercelestial Prayer Team will also meet via Zoom on Saturday, February the 20th at 10 a.m. There will be a leadership meeting right after church on February the 21st at 11.30. And finally, I'd like to welcome our uh, new Vestry class of 2023. Jan, David, Uso, and Diane. Along with the rest of the Vestry members, teams, we plan on doing a lot of great things this year. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, wherever we are, we are bold to sing.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. During these moments of meditation, receive whatever gifts God makes available to you in whatever form God makes them available to you. We share spiritual communion today. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ, live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a loving parent. Go in peace to follow the good road. And may God's blessing, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks be to God. Goodbye for now, everyone. Before we go, just a reminder that this afternoon from 1130 until 1, we will be distributing Blessed Communion Host and Ashes for Ash Wednesday. So please come by St. Paul's uh, 306 Peyton Road uh, to receive Blessed Communion Host. Please pray for us this week. Know that we are praying for you. And join us again right here online for Sunday morning worship at 10 a.m. with St. Paul's Episcopal Church.